I bet you didn't know your Mac can do this. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. And here we go again. So we have 10 different things today that most people don't know their Macs can do. Now I'm guessing you're gonna know a couple of these for sure, but overall I'm guessing there's gonna be one or two you don't know. And definitely post in the comments. If you know all 10, I'll be shocked. So without further ado, let's just actually get into this right away. And I'm gonna show you one through 10. All right, number one's pretty useful if you come across like an event or something, but it's an image and it's not in text. Let me explain for a second. Over on my screen here, here's a good example right here. This is saying, you know, this is some kind of a spring craft fair event here. And I wanna get the information off here, but even quicker, I wanna add this to my calendar and do a whole bunch of stuff with it. Let me just show you what you have to do here. Go over here, I'm gonna go shift command four. And I'm gonna take a quick, right here, quick screenshot of this, watch this. I'm gonna take a screenshot of that, all right? Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, let me actually open up Finder. So we're gonna go to that screenshot in here and we're gonna open up that screenshot right here. Let me go ahead and put this in the middle. And this is gonna be, obviously, we open this up in preview. All right, so here it is in preview right here, and you can see this is just an image, but actually Max can recognize this as text. So watch this, I can go ahead and select this text just like this. I can cut and paste this right into a document if I want to. I can grab all the text, do the same thing. I think everyone knows that. But even more importantly, if it recognizes a date like this, look at this, I can click on this little down arrow right here, click on it, and I can add this right to my calendar or reminders, just like that. So it actually recognizes that as a date, and you can go ahead and just set reminder or a calendar event instantly right there. Even more so, if you have an address down here, it'll recognize the addresses too. What you can do down here is you can click the down arrow and you can actually say show address. Look at this, really quickly, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open up a little window like this and show you it in maps right there, giving you the address and everything like that. So it recognizes that field as well. And then finally, if you have something like an email too, look at this, it recognizes that. You can click this down arrow and you can compose an email to this person, you can add it to your contacts, you can FaceTime them, you can do whatever, if it's a phone number or whatever. So all this is built in here and Apple will recognize all the information off of an image. Again, not text, but an image. All right, now number two here has been around for like 15 or 20 years and people don't know it exists. I like using it. Let me just show you what it is. Let's say I'm doing some research here in Spain and let's say I'm just really quickly want to take this information right there and I want this information for later. You can select it like I just did. You just grab it like this and drag it over to your desktop. It's going to create a file for you. Let me actually shut this down over here. This file is going to be a text clipping file and it's just sitting on my desktop. I like to create a folder over here and just drop them in there. Obviously, here's the file. If you open it up, here's the text I just dragged over. Now, what is what is this good for? Well, a couple different things. So if you basically have like a program where you want to go ahead and just drag it into it, maybe something like pages, let me just show you. So now we have pages open. You can take any of these files like this and just drag them right in there and it's gonna put the text right in there. So you can see that you can save these as text clippings. I like to do that and I have a folder for them. And then I just delete them later if I need them or I just need quick thoughts and stuff. You just take text, really quickly select it, move it over into a folder and you have all those clippings in there for when you wanna move them back to a document later. It's just something a lot of people don't know. This third one's actually gonna be something you may know about, but I'm gonna show you a little secret with it, so hold on one second. If you look at my screen over here, this is desktop and dock in your settings, so go to desktop and dock, scroll all the way down, and we're gonna look for hot corners right here. Now, you may know what this is, obviously, a lot of people do. You can set up things for hot corners. So for instance, I have Launchpad in the lower left-hand corner. You can go ahead and click this and select Launchpad here. Now, if I move my cursor over here down to the left corner, it opens up, look at that, it opens up Launchpad instantly for me. I can click off, so if I wanna do that really quickly, that's easy, right? That's, that's pretty easy. Some people get annoyed by it because sometimes you do it accidentally. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that in a second. But over here, what I like to do actually is in the right-hand corner, I like to go ahead and put a quick note in here like this. And then I'm gonna click, um, well, we'll leave that up. So now if I go to the right corner, it's gonna, see that little screen in the very, very corner pops out. You just click on it. It's gonna open up a window and I can go ahead and put in a quick note. Test this, all right? Then I can just shut it down. What happens basically is if you go into notes over here, you click on it and it'll actually go up here into Quick Notes. So here it is right here, and you can see it test this right there, but it's in Quick Notes. If I go back there, it's right there. But if you wanna make this a, just a real note, you can just take this and you can drag this into any of these other real notes and make it a real note later if you want to. So it's Quick Note initially, you save notes, and if you're thinking of something really quickly and you wanna make a note of it, but then you can move it over there. Um, and you can make it actually a real note later and just kinda of clear this out. 
That's number one. Number two, though, is if you don't like doing this where things pop up accidentally, you can create a modifier. So when you're actually in this screen here, and when you go to Quick Note, just hold on something like the Option key, and look what happens over here. See that? So if I go like this, now watch what happens. If I hold on the Option key and then cl click it here, it's going to make a modifier there. So now if I go down here, look at nothing's going to happen down here. See it? But if I hold down the Option key and then do it, there's the Quick Note again. So that actually prevents it from happening, and you just have to hold the Option key or whatever key you make up there, and it really makes it useful. So if you gets annoyed, you know, if you're getting annoyed by the things popping up, just use that modifier and that'll solve it. All right, number four, let's say you have a document someone sends you and they want your signature on it. Let me show you how to do this really easily without having to, you know, of course you can sign like uh, with your mouse or something, but it never looks accurate. This is way better. So look at my screen here. First of all, here's a screen here. Let's say you, you have to put your signature over here as the photographer. And uh, this is actually gonna be in preview. So once you have the form in here, first thing you wanna do is you wanna click over here, see this over here, this little kind of pen here. Click on that little pen tool right there. Now, before we do anything, leave that up for a second. All you gotta do is you actually go ahead and take, take a white piece of paper and you just sign a name on here, right? So you sign a name on here, so you have kind of a signature sitting on there. I don't know if you can see that. You go back in over here, once you click on this little plus over here, or this little pen, and you're gonna find this little thing right here. It looks like a little signature. Click on that. And you're going to see it opens up a window here. Make sure you're on camera. Of course, you can use your trackpad and stuff if you're on a laptop. But here is camera. All you got to do is hold up the signature. Watch what happens. I'm going to hold this up to the screen over here, see if I can get that accurate. Even though it's reversed, what it's going to do is it's going to actually fix it. You know, it's going to orient it correctly. And then I'm going to move that off, and I'm going to click Done. See that? It creates the signature here. I can take the signature now, drag it over here, actually, right onto my screen, stick it in there. I can resize it if I want to, just like that. There's my signature, although it's not mine really, but you get the idea. Now, anytime I come back in here, it'll be saved up here. So watch, if I click on this again, it's in there for all times until I delete it. You can delete it as well, but every time that you have a document, you can just drag that in. So you really only have to do this one time, and then you have your signature in there for all the time that you actually use it for these documents. Just use that piece of paper. It's going to be the most accurate. This next one I use all the time as well, and nobody really knows this exists on a Mac. So take a look over here. I have Finder open right here, and obviously you have different folders in here. You can go in here and just take a look. So obviously a lot of times it's going to be in list view like this. You want to put it over here in this view right here, which is the icon view and look for some empty space in here. So I like to co color coordinate things. So once you actually have some empty space, just right click in the empty space here, and then go down to show view options right here. See it right down here? Click on that. It's gonna bring up this screen right here. And then you go down here to background and click color. See that? And then you can go ahead and click right here in this white box, and you can change the color to any background you want in there. Look at this. You can even go down to a color picker and pick any color. You can use like the color wheel here. You can select a color like that. Make it a different color. So now, actually, what happens is if you go into your documents versus your desktop, you can kind of go ahead and create folders and stuff. This can be done in any folder. You can make this thing. Let's say you have documents that you never want to remove. Go ahead and make it red. Every time you see that red, you're going to know, don't touch these files. Maybe you have finance files in a folder. Go ahead and make them green like this. Now you know that they're finance files. Use colors to help you, and I think it works really well. And you can always just remove it by going back over here, clicking on this little you know square over here, and then just changing it back to like a white color here. And uh, if I can go ahead and do that, it's going to make it white again. There it goes. This next one's actually really useful if you have a printer connected to your Mac and you wanna be able to drag files right into that printer icon and print instantly. Let me show you how to do this. So what you wanna do first of all is you wanna go into printers and scanners in here. And once you're in printers and scanners, you're gonna look for your little printer icon here. And what you wanna do is you wanna drag that all the way into your menu bar down here, right into the menu bar. And uh, obviously that's super simple to do, right? So while it's sitting in the menu bar, then at that point, all you have to do is take files from anywhere that they are in, in you know, they could be in Finder on your desktop, and just drag that right into that little icon there, and it's going to start printing for you instantly. So you can go ahead and do that really quickly. So you just drag files into the little printer icon in the menu bar down there and into the dock, I guess, and there you go. They'll print instantly for you. It's an easy way to print. All right, for this next tip, has this ever happened to you? Here we are in Safari over here, and I have three tabs open. I'm doing some work, and I accidentally shut down Safari, right? Just like that. I'm like, uh-oh, where did all my tabs go? I'm never going to be able to get those back, right? All I got to do is just open up Safari again, open it up, and then on the keyboard, hit Shift-Command-T. Watch what happens. Shift-Command-T. It instantly opens up another window, and it's going to bring back all those tabs you just had open, including the one we just lost. So all your tabs come back with shift command t open it back up and the, all the tabs will come back that you lost and you never lose them. 
All right, for this next one, have you ever had to pick someone up at the airport only to think, hey, is the flight even on time? Where is it? Is it in the air still? There's an easy way to check that in two seconds. Over here, what you wanna do, let me actually go in here. You wanna go in here and you wanna click on the spotlight right here, spotlight little button, bring up spotlight, and then type in or just copy in the flight number like that. It's gonna give you the flight right here instantly in spotlight. You double click on it like that. And as soon as you double click on it, it's gonna give you this little diagram and look at the plane. It's showing you exactly where the plane is. So let's say it was over the Atlantic or the, you know, over here somewhere. It's gonna show you where the plane is. I think it's just over Europe right now, sitting right over there. Where is that? That's close, I guess. It's somewhere around there. And uh, you get the idea, but it's gonna give you the exact map of where the plane is in the sky. Pretty crazy, right? So you can tell where everything is. You're gonna get basically departed, arriving early, all the information in here as well, duration, baggage claim. All that information's right in here, two seconds. Okay, for this next tip, it's actually built right into maps. And let me just show you what I mean here. So here we are. Let's say we're going to be camping and we're out somewhere. Who knows where this is, right? We're out somewhere and we want to look at the route. Where, we, where do we want to go today? But there's some wildfires and stuff. Look at the maps over here. In the lower left-hand corner, it's going to show you the temperature right down here. But it's also going to show you the air quality of exactly the middle of the map. See that? So it says air quality is 80. That's kind of high, you know. But let's say we want to go a little bit further. Is the air quality going to be terrible there because of these fires? Look at this. I just moved the map. Now watch what happens. As I'm moving the map over here you can see down there this thing keeps going up see this number and uh, the air quality looks like it's now 107 over here and it's going up so we're, we're getting into some kind of a danger zone over here 108 so let's just say you want to plan your day at parks and recreation or anywhere out where you're camping or hiking and stuff you can check the air quality you can actually zoom in on specific points and it's going to give you the exact air quality at that point right there and then if you click on the little temperature thing down here and click on that what it basically does is it's going to bring up a, a weather thing right here just basically right here for that exact location showing you the weather as well so you can zero in things on the map get the air quality and the weather instantly who knew okay this next one's actually pretty cool just if you want to annoy your friends or something this is the 10th and final one let's say you're watching your favorite youtuber right over here take a look at the screen all you have to do down here is as it's actually playing if you go to the keyboard and you type in awesome the word awesome right as it's playing and then just let it go. Watch what happens. It instantly changes the menu bar down here to this flashing kind of crazy color. See it there? So now if you actually drag this, let me just make it bigger so you can see it. So by clicking awesome, look at that menu bar. It just starts flashing. It kind of gives you a seizure here. So if you want to annoy people, you can go ahead and do that. Now if you type awesome again, that flashing you know, menu bar will go away. It'll go back to red. Um, let me actually just do that really quickly just to prove it to you. And there we go. So you can see now the menu bars return back to red and it's not annoying your friends any longer. But it's something that you can always use. It as kind of like a party trick or something. I like those kind of things. All right, we're going to wrap this one up. It's kind of a long video. There's 10 of them right there. I hope you guys did know all of those. I'm guessing you're going to know, like I said, a couple, maybe three or four of them. Hopefully like six or at least five of them you didn't know. Post in the comments if you guys know these, if you like these videos. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.